Today's story was written by Reddit user Mr. Sharks 202 The aliens were the void stillborn abominations, children of oblivion's entropy. They flowed out from the darkness like water squeezed from desert rock. They spread out across the stars, not like cracks on glass, but like floodwaters eating away at the shore. It was a reclamation, a redistribution of space back into its true form. Nothing, purity, clarity in absence. They found mankind when she was still earthbound, still shackled to dirt, unaware of her true power. They then gathered around a small white star, a little beacon that pulses energy out into space with sputtering, spasming screams. The abominations had rules. They had rituals given to them by older powers, and they followed them with zeal. They formed a coven, a vile guild to harmonise over how to best bestow the peace of obliteration into mankind. They decided invasion was the simplest solution, and to the abominations, simplicity was God. The new stations referred to it as Armageddon, the biblical precursor to Rapture, in many senses, the events would probably be quite similar. Silk ovals the size of mountains appeared in the skies. Strange forces of lightning arced down from the ships and didn't crack the earth, but simply killed it. It was not a strike, but a release. The abominations emerged from their shells, long with spider-like legs. They breached daylight with horror, arising from an empty hell and staining reality by cleansing it. In a mere few days, the earth had been glazed. Nothing more than a husk, a corpse so riddled with holes that a haunting song could be produced by a gust of wind, turning death into a flute. The terrible invaders were so proud of their work, the universe was working its way back into purity, into righteous petrophy. Yet, something strange happened, something unexpected. At the final hour, during mankind's literal burial, Persistence still found perseverance, and hope kept its fire alive. The abominations had come to expect a pattern in their destruction. Buildings fall when their foundations are broken. Every knife they stabbed into someone served to be the very sword they drive deeper into themselves. True destruction isn't an effort, it is an effect. An effect mankind seems somehow immune to. The curiosity started when the first abomination had been killed. In the fledgling days of battle, not a single invader had been touched. Technology can make a god out of anything, and a devil out of the willing. Man's missiles, her lovable nukes, they did nothing but brighten the night sky so that they could see their own destruction, an ironic torch. In the wasteland that had been wrought, the invaders walked with zealous pride. The stillness, the emptiness that they'd formed, it inflamed them. But something had happened during this walk. Arising and screaming from the rubble of a building, a human charged at them, bloody, broken and covered in dust. The invaders were massive beasts, cresting twenty feet at full stature. They looked like a demon crafted to kill with terror, yet the human charged nonetheless. They had no gun, no armour, and no plan. All they had was a makeshift machete, made from rusted iron and piecemeal tape. The abominations watched in confusion as the human ran towards them. They didn't move a muscle. The human sprinted up to the first beast they could reach, and they yelled with enough red-hot passion that it heated the air. Without a moment's hesitation, they began to hack at the legs of the beast, bringing it down to earth, crashing it into dirt. It was a painting, a monastic silence insisted by the presence of something greater. The other abominations could only watch as the human stood over their fellow invader. They watched as the human kept swinging, kept screaming, as they made a mess of the thing, over and over, wailing without care, without acknowledging the others. They didn't just kill the beast, they desecrated it. It horrified them. The insanity of it, the brutality and the absurdity. It did not add up in their minds. Against the backdrop of religious zeal, of infinite dedication to infinite destruction, 
absolute entropy. It became small. The dark room they were creating became alive with the fire and colour of useless passion. Across the earth, the same incredible event kept taking place. Angry, energised and woefully without care, humans ran into oblivion. They didn't need a torch to see in the dark. No map could guide them in the disparity that the abominations had crafted. But, unlike other creatures, man didn't need to know where or why. The invaders tried to mount resistance and finish a job that they had gotten so close to finishing. But now, every time they saw a human, every time they heard that shrill echo of their screams, they became horribly scared. More and more their actions began to terrify them. Why would these humans erect monuments against their own wreckage? Why were they taunting the ominous sky, an act that could easily get them killed? None of it made sense. None of it had true reason or purpose. The final strike came quick. One followed another, dominoes of chaos. It was one thing to not give up after their initial assault, but to fight on? They're not just fighting, but rebuilding, taunting. How? The next point was the falling axe. It was the glaive of the guillotine. The invaders became broken when they saw that the humans were enjoying the chaos. It was too much. To look at the darkness, blind under her shadow, and smile at the excitement of not knowing. To find joy in challenging the impossible. It was heretical beyond compression. The creatures made no attempt to flee or save themselves. The pointless nature of the effort infected their minds like a virus, and it found no resistance. Mankind didn't rise from the ashes. She's much too haphazard and messy to do something as beautiful as that. Instead, she clawed out from under the rubble, bloody, confused and angry. She didn't mount a smart resistance, but an ideological one. Mankind won the day because the beasts were beasts of purpose. They drained life of meaning and returned the universe to her absurd state. Their mistake was thinking that humanity obeyed the same rules as everything else. Mankind didn't need purpose in her fight. The fight was purpose enough.